Hello and welcome to another episode of my skill system series. In the last one we set it up so that when we start playing hotkeys are automatically generated for us. So here in the first row we have F6 to F11 and beneath that 1 to 6. In this episode we will start to work on the core of the system which is casting spells and we will make it so that you can assign spells to the hotkeys. To begin with, let's go to our master skill actor, add some variables here. So what we need is a player reference. So this will be a skill character reference, editable and exposed on spawn. And let's put that in the runtime category. Then we need a variable called on cooldown question mark, which will be a boolean also in the runtime category. Another one called currently casted question mark. Let's also put that in the same category. And finally we need a hotkey that this spell is assigned to currently and that will be a w underscore skill hotkey reference. Also put in the runtime category. Then let's go into the event graph remove all of the nodes here. Instead we want to add a custom event called on try cast spell. So what should happen when the player tries to cast this spell? Kind of self-explanatory. We won't implement functions and events yet. We will do that in the next episode. For now, just to have that created, we can close the master skill now and go into the skill hotkey. Here we will also add a custom event, which we will call assign spell or skill, give that an input, which is a master skill reference, which we can just call spell. And let's make sure to promote that to a variable called assigned spell. Then off of the assigned spell, drag and search for set hotkey. And the hotkey that this spell is assigned to is self. So the widget we are inside of right now. Then let's get the skill button. And we want to set is enabled to true. Because if there is a skill assigned, you should be able to press the button to use it. Also, we will need to set the icon then. So get the skill icon set brush from texture and to figure out the texture let's get the assigned spell get current stage break that the only thing we want to see here is the override icon and we want to check whether that override icon is valid and let's add a select node off of this plug in the return value for the texture so if it is valid means there is an override icon and then we should also use that so plug it in for true but if it's false off of the assigned spell get skill info break that and let's only show the icon here then connect that to false okay so what this means is just check whether the current stage of the spell has an override icon if so, use that, and if not, use the default icon that is defined for that skill. After we set the brush, let's also set visibility, so we actually see that. And we will use self-hit test invisible, so your mouse cursor can still hit the button underneath the icon. Okay, that's it for our assign spell event. Let's also select our skill button and add an on-clicked event, so when we click this, we want to drag in our assigned spell and call on try cast spell. Let's also add a variable here called deactivated question mark. What we will need this for is that when you cast a spell, you should not be able to cast any other spell at the same time. So we will deactivate all of the other hotkeys when a certain skill is casted. We also want to add a function called clear signed spell and first we want to check whether there is an assigned spell so is the assigned spell valid 
and let's use the check, not the boolean here. If it's not, we can just return without doing anything. But if it is valid, we can copy over the assigned spell and set its hotkey to null. So we clear that. Then we can set our assigned spell to null. Afterwards, get the skill button. And again, set is enabled. This time to false. Then get the skill icon and set brush from texture. Just leave that empty, so we will clear that. And then we want to set visibility of the icon to be hidden. After that, we can return on this path as well. And compile save. Add another function called enable hotkey. And what this will simply do is set deactivated to false. Get the assigned spell and get on cooldown and a branch for that and if it's on cooldown we can simply return so we will just do nothing but if not we will get our skill button again and set this back to be enabled check it connect it up here then get the skill icon and set visibility to self hit test invisible. So show that again. Get the cooldown image and set its visibility to hidden. And copy over the skill icon. We want to set color and opacity to be white with an alpha of one. You might be wondering why we need that and the reason for that is that later when we deactivate the spell let's just quickly show the skill icon we can set the color of this to something like a dark gray to indicate that it can't be used at the moment and when it's activated again it needs to be white so the icon isn't tinted in any way okay after setting back the color to be white we can simply return Let's maybe duplicate enable hotkey and we can call this disable hotkey. Here what we want to do is set deactivated to true. We still get on cooldown check for that. If it's true don't do anything but if it's false we want to add some space here. Get the dynamic cooldown material. Set scalar parameter value the parameter name being percent and the value 1 and then we want to set enabled but set it to false we want to set the skill icon to self it as invisible again and we want to set the cooldown image to be visible but we don't want to set the skill icons color so we can just remove that and connect the cooldown image to the return node pile and save now we can leave the skill hotkey widget and instead we want to go to our skill character because here we need some variables first one a boolean called is casting question mark then a variable called starting skills so the skills that you already have when you play in the editor that will be a master skill classes array and finally a variable called current spell so the one that is casted right now that will also be a master skill but a reference and a single variable instead of an array let's add a function called generate starting skills and here we will get our starting skills and run it for each loop now for each entry let's spawn an actor from class the array element being the class. Split the spawn transform, otherwise you will get an error message. Collision handling override will be always spawn, ignore collisions. And the player reference is a reference to ourselves. Once we've got that, we need to find an empty hotkey that we can assign it to. To do that, get the main widget, get the all hotkey slots, 
run it for each loop with break on that. And for every hotkey slot, we want to get the assigned spell. Check for is valid. And if it's not valid, that means that there is no spell assigned to it, so we can use it. Then we can drag off of the array element, call assign spell, spell being the return value for spawn node. Connect that to the is not valid. And once we did that, we can break out of the loop. Maybe add some reroute nodes, part and save. Another function is needed here called begin spell cast. It needs one input of the type master skill reference called casted spell or skill, doesn't matter. We will set our current spell to that and we will set is casting to true. Then again get the main widget and get all hotkeys. Run it for each loop. And what we want to do for every hotkey is checking whether the assigned spell is valid. And if that's the case, what we also need to check is whether the assigned spell unequals the casted spell. Because that one does not need to be deactivated. Add a branch for that connected to the is valid and if that's true so is valid is true and it's not equal the casted skill we can drag off of the array element and call disable hotkey file and save let's duplicate that function and call it end spellcast alt click the current spell so the wire is removed means we will just clear the current spell is casting will be set to false and if the assigned spell is valid and it doesn't equal the casted spell we don't want to disable the hotkey but this time re-enable it okay compile save that let's go to the event graph on begin play Right after we added our main widget to the viewport, we can call our generate starting skills function. And to actually assign some spells, we first need some. So let's right click create child blueprint class, which we will call arcane site. So that will be our first default spell here. Let's open up the skill info, give that a name, arcane site, and let's search for an icon. Icon underscore arcane site. We don't have to enter a description yet. Element, don't need an element. Target will be self. And let's add one stage here. The first one, no required level, no override icon. Just give that a mana cost of let's say 50 and a cooldown of four seconds maybe. So we can test in the next episode whether cooldown and mana cost are working. Feel free to enter a description if you want. Let's duplicate arcane site and call that flame nova. So this will be the second spell. Name obviously will be flame nova now. And search for the appropriate icon. So icon underscore flame nova should be somewhere in here. There it is can add a description if you want. Target will be area around self, so it will be an explosion. And let's go to the first stage here. Cooldown, you can give that a higher cooldown, six seconds. And double mana cost, so 100. Compile, save, and in order to add them to our hotkeys when we play, we need to add them to our starting skills array. So add two elements. First will be Arcane Side, second one Flame Nova. And if we now compile, save and playtest, you will see both of our spells are on the first two hotkeys. You can hover over them, see that they're slightly highlighted. And if we press them, technically our on try cast spell event is called in the master skill actor. 
but that doesn't do anything yet, which we will fix in the next episode. Alright, thank you for watching and see you in the next episode.